when you really consider how massive and how extensive the ocean is, that it covers over 70% of the planet, there's really something mysterious and, and unique about it, and it draws me. The sea turtle is a symbol of ocean health. They're that charismatic megafauna. You, know, you can't help but love a sea turtle when you see it. Believe it or not, I never had the opportunity to see a sea turtle in a natural habitat here. The first sea turtle that I saw was a mother loggerhead. I knew what she was going to do, but I couldn't help but just kind of stare. I had to like pinch myself. I felt like I had teleported to like, you know, Jurassic Park times. It was so crazy. As humans, we tend to think of ourselves as separate from or above other animals. But we might not be that different from our animal cousins. We've become separated from the natural world, and it's time to reconnect. This is a wild connection. I've been living in the Palm Beaches for the past 12 years, and it's this paradise that I now call home. But there are some of my fellow inhabitants that I am barely acquainted with. Sure, I've seen sea turtles, when I've been surfing, I've seen them from the boat, and I've even seen the odd straggler on the beaches during nesting season. But it wasn't until I met Hannah Campbell that I felt truly connected to my ocean neighbors. Like many people in Florida, I am a, an official transplant, although I do consider myself an honorary Floridian. I came down to the Palm Beaches when I was four years old, and I've been here ever since. I think what I find most special about the ocean is its uniqueness and its importance for the health of the planet and the health of us. When I was a kid and I was growing up, you really take it for granted. You go to the ocean, you go to the beach because it's something that Floridians do and you know you get a tan and people like that. But when you really consider how massive and how extensive the ocean is, that it covers over 70% of the planet, and it's largely unexplored. There's really something mysterious and unique about it, and it draws me. There's nothing like being under the water and on the reef system and watching a sea turtle that's not injured, that you know doesn't need our assistance, and being able to watch their, their natural behavior. And you know, me underwater as a diver, I'm not a marine animal. I'm in their habitat now. Getting ready for a dive is always super exciting. You know, going through the inlet, once you've set up all your gear, you have all your tanks prepared, you know, you're, you're ready to go. You can't wait to get to that dive site. And are you going to see a sea turtle? Are you going to get great footage? Are you going to see something different? You're on the dive site, captain says dive, dive, dive. You roll off the boat and all of a sudden you are in silence. The only thing you can hear is the sound of your own breathing through your regulator and you slowly descend. And during that descent, that's the exciting time for me because you don't know what you're going to see. Am I going to see a sea turtle? Am I gonna watch them do something that I've never seen them do before? What am I going to learn by being underwater that I can take back with me and I can share with others? You start seeing the silhouette of the reef and then all of a sudden things start to come into focus. Maybe a big barrel sponge or maybe a school of fish and it's drift diving here in Florida. So as you kind of drift with the current, that in itself is kind of like being a sea turtle. I mean, that's something that we don't, we don't experience that living on land. You don't experience getting, you know, swept along a beautiful coral reef and you're immersed. That's that refuge, right? That's that feeling of this is a solace and I can be here underwater and I can escape a lot of the things. People texting on their phones or you know checking emails or some of the day-to-day -day that we all experience, you can't do that underwater. Sea turtles do some funny stuff. 
I tend to say that they play this if I can't see you, you can't see me kind of game. You see these sea turtles and they have their heads tucked under this ledge, this naturally occurring ledge. And really what the diver sees is a, it's a turtle butt. In reality, they use the reef as a refuge to rest, especially now during nesting season, especially the mothers that are out there that need to catch a rest. Here at Loggerhead Marine Life Center, what I do is I uh, help design programs, help guide the strategic direction of the education department so we can serve students, adults, their families, communities, and connect them with sea turtles. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Okay. Can you raise your hand if you have ever heard of a sea turtle before? Yes? Okay, awesome. Where do sea turtles live? Somebody tell me. At the water. They live in the water, very good. <laughs> Today is just priceless. We are so fortunate to have our partners from Loggerhead Marine Life Center here to provide water bottles to all of our scholars, uh, as well as faculty and staff. And what you can do is you can bring them home but every day you come back to school, bring it with you. And you can fill it up with water, and every time you do, guess what? You're helping save our Earth. How's that sound? Yay! <laughs> that sounds like a big thumbs up, right? Thank you! One of the challenges that we see here, um, not only in the Palm Beaches, but really around the world, is that a lot of children, you know, don't have the opportunity to become a diver. You know, what does that training look like? Is it expensive? Is it accessible? Do they live in a coastal area where that sort of experience is possible? A lot of the times, unfortunately, the answer is no. Giving people an opportunity to experience wildlife in person is the best way to uh, form that connection. Watching a child see a sea turtle in our outdoor hospital here for the first time never gets old. When they see them, it's like, it's almost like watching the same spark that I had, maybe a little bit later in life, not as a child, but the same spark that I had underwater on that reef when I saw my first sea turtle. That's what I see when these, when these children enter to our hospital, learn about the patients, but really just look in those windows and they can't believe that there is this, you know, fairly large animal staring back at them. All these questions come after that. What is this thing? You know, how did it get here? Why is it here? Am I in a zoo? And am I in an aquarium? And that kind of opens up this conversation. Well, no, you're you're in a sea turtle hospital, and this is why they're here. And and this is what you can do to help make sure that more sea turtles don't come to the hospital, but they stay out in the ocean. Sea turtles serve as an amazing tool to engage people in a bigger conversation about marine conservation and ocean health. They're what we call a flagship species. So, you know, they're that charismatic megafauna. You can't help but love a sea turtle when you see it. The sea turtle is a symbol of ocean health. Unfortunately, we do see a lot of threats that are facing sea turtles, even here in the Palm Beaches, where most folks are pretty familiar with their presence and are conscious of their actions. Some of the primary threats that we see affecting our patients here include, you know, uh, unintentional boater interactions, so strikes from a propeller, interactions with fisheries, so entanglements in monofilament line, or ingestion of hooks from nearby recreation. We also see ingestion of foreign objects, and you know the big conversation that's happening right now is the ingestion of, of pollutants, mostly plastics. There's a statistic out there that says not too long from now there's going to be more plastics in the ocean than there are fish. We see these plastics actually pass through the, uh, the intestinal tracts of our sea turtle patients. 
These sea turtles, when they come in here, have a personality and we do get connected to them. I think it's very challenging not to feel connected to this animal, especially one such as charismatic as a sea turtle that has this injury. You know that it can feel, you know that it has the ability to feel pain. So you see these injuries and you can't help but kind of root for them, you know, along their journey in recovery. The first experience that I had here at Loggerhead Marine Life Center with a sea turtle in its natural habitat was through our turtle walk program. That first night, what my role in the turtle walk program was to be what we call a scout. I was handed a night scope. I did go through a training, of course, but I was handed a night scope. I was handed a red light to only use when absolutely necessary. And I was told that there are guests that are waiting for you to find a sea turtle that is going to successfully make a nest so they can come down and they can uh, see and, and learn what we know. Believe it or not, I never had the opportunity to see a sea turtle in a natural habitat here. The first sea turtle that I saw was a mother loggerhead. I knew what she was going to do, and I was supposed to radio to somebody or something, but I couldn't help but just kind of stare. I grew up here in the Palm Beaches. I went to the beach all the time as a child and as a young adult. I had to like pinch myself. I felt like I had teleported to like, you know, Jurassic Park times. It was so crazy. My first thought was, ah, oh, this is incredible. We have to do this. We need to go document this. But then I got to thinking, sea turtles nest at night and it's really dark at night and we can't use lights because that would disturb the sea turtles. Well, what if we use invisible light? What if we use light that's at a point on the spectrum that neither you nor I nor the sea turtles can see. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're gonna use special bulbs that emit infrared light. And basically this is light that we can't see. And we have a special camera with a modified sensor that can see that light. So while it's gonna be pitch black to us and more importantly to the sea turtles, the camera and you we'll be able to see everything and hopefully we'll be able to capture this miracle of nature. James, are you ready? Yeah. Let's do it. This is where I get a glimpse of Hannah's world. That's right. So and this you, is the focus, right? Yep, Over that's there. the focus okay. ring right at the top. So you're just looking for a, like a small car coming out of the water. <laughs> Could be, yeah. Or, you know. Well, a leatherback would be a small car, right? Yeah, a leatherback looks like a small boat overturned on the beach. <laughs> oh wait, stop, 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 stop. Right. So Annie Boat got here and she had an excess of air that was trapped in her intestinal tract, her gastrointestinal tract. And that is a very uh, risky uh, injury or, or ailment to have w when you're a sea turtle because the more time you spend at the surface buoyant, so there was so much excess gas trapped within Annie Bo's body that she was unable to dive and unable to feed. And being at the surface, not only can she not eat as normally as she would, but it also puts her at tremendous risk of getting hit by a boat which is something that we definitely don't want to see. When Annie Bo arrived here at the hospital, um, our rehabilitation team had to work very quickly, had to identify, you know, what was the cause of the buoyancy disorder? Was there a blockage and could we remove it? And fortunately, we could. The best part, of course, and what we all wait for is, is their release. So, you know, we're not a zoo, we're not an aquarium. We are a sea turtle hospital and we do release our patients, you know, knock on wood, if all goes well in treatment. And watching the sea turtle return to the ocean after living every day, I mean, we, we all, we work here, we see these animals every day and watching through their treatment as they get better, maybe, uh, you know, injuries start to fill in or they start to, their blood count starts to, you know, 
normalize. Watching them return to the ocean, knowing what they've been through is unlike any other feeling as an environmental educator. I think sometimes after spending time in the sea turtle hospital, I do question if I, I do have hope. You know, we see a lot of injuries and we see a lot of things happening to these animals, but the answer is always that I do. I always circle back to the fact that I do still have hope. And what helps me hang on to that hope is watching people come through our doors and experience education programs and watching those connections be formed and knowing that I play a small part in creating those experiences for them, that is what keeps my hope hanging on. But it's not just about saving sea turtles. It's bigger than that. These oceans around the world are the lifeblood of our planet and the threats facing sea turtles and other marine life, from climate change to fishing nets to incredible plastic pollution, you name it, there are many. And if we cannot save one of the most iconic species in our oceans, I really wonder about our future on this planet. Oh wait, stop, 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 stop. So ooh, we have an entry track here. This is a loggerhead sea turtle, you can tell by the flipper pattern. And if we follow this track up, we might uh, see one of our nesting turtles. Mm -hmm. could use this maybe. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there is something up there. All right, off to you. Let's check it out. So the track has yielded a result. That is her, right? Oh yeah. Yep, this is a loggerhead and it looks like she's either body pitting, which is in the beginning, or she's camouflaging, which is at the end. It looks like she's body pitting, so we'll see if she's So it gonna... might be the beginning. It might we be might the beginning. We might be able to watch Ooh. this whole thing. Yep. So it looks like she's gonna land. This is awesome. She's dropping. You can see how she lifts her flippers when she lays the egg every time. What's that all about? So those are those contractions, so it's one of our favorite parts of watching this process because, you know, as humans, we have contractions and we give birth and that, those rear flippers kind of bending up, that's that indicator that she's going to pass a few eggs. Wow. What a marvel of nature. You can see how big those roof flippers are. They're like big paddles to dig this up. Right. So she's just taking a rest now, right? It's laborious, isn't it, for her? Very laborious. Um, lots of energy is spent making sure that not only the look of her digging and her activity is, is covered, but also the scent. Um, so she naturally knows that there are lots of predators on the beach that can pick up on the scent of her eggs and the scent of her activity. So she's, she's making sure by camouflaging with her front flippers here that that is not gonna be an option. Right, so she's doing like a little dance now, right? She's kind of moving from side to side and making sure that it's totally camouflaged. Exactly, so this stage of the nesting process is called camouflaging because that's exactly what she's doing and because those front flippers are so powerful, she's gonna use those front flippers to fling as much of that dry sand back to cover her tracks and cover her scent. Whoop, sand spray. <laughs> Hazard of the job. Right. It's incredible, right? That's amazing, absolutely amazing. <laughs> No matter how many times you see it, it's, uh, it's always something to behold, you know? Yeah. Wow, she's really boogieing for a turtle. <laughs> she is. She is moving. <laughs> but, uh, by way of turtle, she's an Olympic sprinter. <laughs> you can see how she blends into the sand like that. It's amazing. Part of the camouflaging. She's got the sand all on her back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's 
got to be welcome I relief. I that feels good. <laughs> All that effort and she can get back to where she feels most comfortable. And then probably do it all again in a couple weeks. <laughs> right. <laughs> she just needed the touch of that water and set her off again. <laughs> Look at that. Wow. It's gorgeous. Goodbye, Mama. Great job. Great job. Wow. And I guess we wait to see the results of this. That's right. In what, 45, 60 days? Yeah, How long? about two to three months, depending on two to, uh, two the to conditions. Two to three months. Mm -hmm. okay. Two to three months. We'll see a hatch out and those little hatchlings will go out to sea. Wow. <laughs> Phenomenal. It's amazing that, you know, this is my home beach. This is where we live. Mm -hmm. And this spectacle is right on our doorstep. It's just phenomenal, isn't it? Mm -hmm, absolutely. Absolutely amazing. Yep. What a night. What a night. Thank you. <laughs>
8.30. I think we should check those nests further down the beach because there's nothing. Wait, Josh, it looks like... Josh, there's a turtle coming out. Check this out. Oh my gosh, but the whole, the whole emergence is happening. Look at this. Oh my gosh, look how many there are. <laughs> yes, we got it. This is incredible. Oh my gosh, look how they're getting out of there. Look, watch those ones down there. There's some by your feet. Watch that, watch that, watch that. Oh my gosh, look at this. We are witnessing the tenacity of nature right now as this whole nest of loggerhead sea turtles try to make it down to the ocean's edge as quickly as possible. And if they can make it to the water's edge and escape the fish crows here this morning, they're then gonna have to battle those waves, use all that, all that energy that they've saved up, battle through those waves and try and now make it past predatory fish like snook and mahi-mahi until they get to the weed line out in the Gulf Stream. It always amazes me how much we take for granted in our communities, like my community here in the Palm Beaches. But Hannah taught me that if we take the time to listen, to observe, and to be patient, a whole set of interesting characters evolves. Characters that faced much adversity in their early lives. Characters that grow to travel the world's oceans. Characters that return one day to their natal beaches to usher in the new generation. And characters that remind us that our oceans are to be protected at all costs.